Grandma's Grandma's kitchen. 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 There's a fiddle tune and a wooden spoon while she's stirring and a singing. There's friends leaving our family land and then the phone's usually ringing. No matter who you are or what you've done, everything's forgiven. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank and ain't it good to be in Grandma's kitchen? Grandma's kitchen. here from Tunes and Wooden Spoons and I am so sorry I already began my uh, show but what did I do I went live from my own personal page and I was headfirst into the recipe when uh, a phone call on my phone and a phone call on this phone that I'm recording with uh, advised me that I was on my own personal page. So I had to stop and I'm, I'm part way through the recipe. So I'm just going to have to tell you uh, what I've done so far so that if you want to bake with me, we'll have to just play it by ear and you'll have to catch up to me. And I'm very sorry with that. That's, that's just me, you know, making a little mistake. But uh, anyway, I, I wanted to tell you that today we are making pork pies and it is a very popular uh, Christmas tradition here in Cape Breton Island. And no, there is no pork in it. And I will be telling you about um, the history as far as, as I can find out. Uh, was written by a, a, a David uh, Muse from the Cape Breton Post back in 2016 and uh, David uh, had a competition in our uh, the Cape Breton Post is a, a, a paper out of Sydney and serves all of Cape Breton Island and he did a competition about the most popular uh, Cape Breton traditions that people like to have and and people voted and pork pies came out on the on the top as one of the most popular uh, recipes and uh, or dishes whatever you want to call it and some of the other contenders were um bologna <laughs> i love bologna um black blood pudding it's called um i think cape red oat cakes was one um there was something about maybe fish cakes was in there too and pork pies and there were there were other things and it is on google you can look it up yourself and, uh, but I'll give you the history of the pork pies after, after a little bit when we go and we have tea. And oh, I just feel so bad that, that I started my recipe without you, but I can't restart the ingredients that, um, that I have in my bowl because I'm ready now to put it in uh, my little tartlet pan. And so, but I'll explain to you uh, just where I'm at. So I just started the tart shells and there are only, um, I think there's only three ingredients. So it's, it's really quick to put together. So uh, the recipe of course is on my website and it's also um, on, on Facebook. I posted that to come on at 145. And so if you're wondering where I was at two o'clock, well, I was just happy on my own page, uh, my own personal page. And uh, I was wondering how come there was so few tuning in. And I said, well, they, maybe they just don't like pork pies, but it was because I was, I was on the wrong spot. Okay, so to this point today, what I had in my bowl here, I'll just mix this all up, I have, mixed up my dough already a nice shortbread base three ingredients so that you can catch up uh i'll just take some time i'll tell you the ingredients if you haven't seen that i put in my bowl one cup of room temperature butter 
two cups of flour, all-purpose flour, and two tablespoons of icing sugar. Just dumped everything together, which you can do if you have one of those nice fancy mixers. Uh, I just use my hands and it doesn't take, honestly, it'll probably take two minutes to mix that up with your hands. If you're using cold butter, uh, it'll take you a lot longer because you'll probably be using a, a pastry blender. And, uh, but I, I probably do everything, like I said when I started the, the other video, I probably do everything the wrong way because uh, there's probably a science that the, the, uh, the pastry will be a lot flakier perhaps um, if you use the cold temperature. And there's, the science is probably there and proven, but I've never made it any ways different. I've just, I just use room temperature butter. And so I mix it all together. So if you're baking with me right now, I'm going to let you go ahead and do those three ingredients. You have to preheat your oven to 350. So please do that. And uh, mix up your one cup of butter, your two cups of flour, and your two tablespoons of icing sugar, and just mix that up until you have a nice dough. So I was going to say that I'm, I was going to tell you all about the pork pies, but since you have to catch up for those who are baking with me, um, I will tell you the, the story that was in the Cape Breton Post back in 2016 that David Muse had uh, had put together that competition. So he tells me here, he says, finally we come to the pork pie, which has no pork in it at all, but is a small tart with a shortbread bottom and a sweet date filling. And here my research was somewhat more successful. Um, so allrecipes.com, an American website, contains a recipe for Cape Breton pork pies as does Victoria BC food blog, The Tea Trolley, in which the writer goes on to explain that the pork pie is peculiar to Cape Breton. Ken Chisholm, writing in the Post on July the 19th, 2013, maintained that pork pies are found only in Cape Breton. And who are we to disagree with an authority as vaulted as Ken? <laughs> but why the name pork pie? There are several theories. One says because they looked like a pork pie hat. I didn't Google what a pork pie hat looks like, so I don't know about that. I, I'm a little off on that. Second one is uh, the second research was that because they are so delicious that you pork out on them. I don't like dates, so I can't even tell you that. But I do know someone that I gave some, some pork pies to this week that had one and then had two and I think had the third one. So they're nice little bite-sized pieces. So that could be it. And uh, then another suggestion is that the name comes from using lard or pork fat instead of butter. And that was in like the original recipe. And that makes a lot of sense to me. Our, I mean, our, um, you know, forebears, all our ancestors that cooked back in, in those days had to utilize whatever they could to make uh, baking uh, the best that they could. And they really did use, uh, you know, the fat from, from God knows, bacon, bacon fat, um, or right off the, the, the roast, I, I have no idea, you know? But certainly, that is a, a very, very plausible ex explanation to me. I think that that may be the reason they're called pork pies is because they were using that. But we'll never know. But they also mention in there that dating back to maybe 1930, I think it was, it was found in a, in a Cape Breton cookbook. The recipe for pork pies. So it's dating back a uh, quite a, a long time. So quite sure that it that it's a, a definite Cape Breton thing. So anyway, uh, I think somebody was maybe googling something about a pork pie hat. So that could be it. Who are we to know? But let's make the pork pies. So in my bowl, I'm going to turn the camera down momentarily. I have mixed the three ingredients together, the nice soft butter, and makes such a nice pliable shortbread dough. 
And you, of course, are going to have a, a tartlet pan, a tartlet pan. Uh, mine has 24 in it. I was at the dollar store and they had ones with maybe a, a dozen little spaces in it. Each one is about an inch and a half. So it's a, it's a small bite-sized uh, tart, little tart. And it's called a tartlet pan. And uh, you don't need any um, grease or butter or spray or parchment in this. It's just fine. And what I was saying in my opening video that I did on my own page by mistake, <laughs> I use my little metal cake tester when I'm going to remove the tarts out off the pan. And you just slide it down one side and you just jiggle a little bit and it just removes. And I'll be showing you that when we get to that part. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry that you missed the opening music that I had. It was Ashley McIsaac, his Christmas album that he did back in the early 90s. And it's just a wonderful CD to listen to at any time. But it is a Christmas album and it's downloadable from iTunes and probably lots of other places because Ashley is quite the musician and quite the dancer and as is his sister, Lisa, who uh, I had both of them early on in my dancing, uh, te my teaching, a career of dancing, they used to be in my classes and they were just a joy to teach with nimble feet and you just had to show them a step and they were off and doing that. They were just such amazing, uh, you know, full of the music. And of course they are now both professional musicians and Ashley I'm sure you know all about Ash Ashley and Lisa McIsaac she's in the band called Madison Violet and if you have never heard that group two ladies I'm telling you they are fantastic just a beautiful I've seen them in concert they're amazing so hopefully by now you might be caught up and uh, again I, I I'm so sorry I'm going to try to get this music going in the background. I was so flubbed by, by my uh, mistake there of airing on my, my own personal page. So um, let me see if I can get this music on. And I'll put it down low, but it's just such a beautiful thing. There. I'll put it on a little bit so you can hear it. And I'm going to lower the camera. Low Poirier, she's all caught up. Thank you, thank you, thank you for telling me that. So now I can move forward. And we have lots to talk about at tea time. I'm going to talk about the cards. So excited about the cards. They all came in yesterday. And, and oh my gosh, all morning long this morning, our son, Brennan, has been just working on getting it up in the store on the website. And uh, hi, Susan Lundy. Kin Cardin, Ontario. Okay, I better stop watching that and I'm going to turn you right down to the bowl again and we'll start where I left off on the first video, which I've since deleted. Okay, here we go. Okay, you can all see that, I think. So this is my dough. And I'm going to get my pan right here. So what you're going to do now is you're going to take a little piece out. You don't have to roll this out like you did on the butter tarts. You just take a little piece like this and you're going to roll it up into a ball. And I would say maybe about an inch wide. And I'm just going to put one in every space. Just roll it up and put it in every space. And I'm just gonna test that. I'm gonna show you what I do. I'm just gonna use my thumbs. Okay. Perfect. So that size is just about the right size. So that's what you're gonna be doing for everyone. And uh, you can do it now if you like. I'm just going to put all of the balls in. This recipe will make at least three dozen, I think. That's what when I made it earlier this week. 
And with this recipe, we're gonna, we're, we'll be doing it in three parts, N not three separate videos, no, no, no. I mean, um, we're gonna be baking this while they're, ba well, they're baking in the oven. I'm going to make the filling, and then we're gonna make the frosting. And uh, if you didn't get maple frosting, for example, I was in Sydney on Monday. We we're over there for an appointment and uh, stopped at Walmart, stopped at Superstore, stopped at Sobeys, uh, stopped at um, Fresh Mart on the way home, checked at our local co-op. No place had maple flavoring. So if you were in that boat, um, I would suggest to use uh, maybe some real maple syrup, you know, maybe a teaspoon of that to give you the flavor of the maple flavoring. That's the one thing that's very traditional about this recipe is that it be maple flavoring on the uh, top when you do the icing. Uh, and if you don't have maple syrup, maple syrup, uh, uh, well, I guess, it's up to you what you want to use, probably vanilla flavoring or whatever. But talking about that, we got home from Sydney late that night after stopping at too many places. And uh, I had ordered from my Watkins gal uh, in, from Mabu, Josephine Carlton McCacken, uh, I had ordered another bottle of vanilla. And I love the Watkins real vanilla. It's just really good. And uh, so I came in the house and sitting on the table, oh, you know, we don't lock our doors around here, by the way, <laughs> not very often, um, but she, Josephine just dropped off my vanilla and she left it on my table. And in it was another little box, I noticed, when I didn't think I had ordered anything extra, but I was just saying, okay, I'll, I'll get to it. When I looked at the little box, it was a little box of maple flavoring. I was jumping for joy. I was so happy. So God bless her. She was watching the show and she said, oh, well, I'll just throw that in in case she, she needs some. And she was so right. And when I called to thank her, she said, no, I didn't do that just so you could be telling saying my name or anything on on your show and she said I just thought you know maybe well she's just a joy and I'm so thankful okay so there's for for the the next batch that you'll be making depending on the size of your pan so I'm just gonna go ahead and push down with my thumb not all the way and just make your little tart try not to you know just almost to the top Keep doing that. Not good to, to have big long fingernails when you're doing this. Perfect. We have lots to do here. So if some of you just have a, a 12 uh, space tartlet pan, you'll be waiting for me to finish here. <laughs> Okay, now uh, while we are doing this, and I have time here, I, I just want to send a thank you out to a couple of special people that um, they know why I'm thanking them. And one is an Anne McDougall from Antigonish, Anne. I want, if you're watching today, I want to just say a special thank you to you and you will know why. And another thank you, I want to 
send a big thank you to Lynn Wyman. Thank you, Lynn. I really appreciate what you did. So thank you very much. And uh, she's a, a faithful watcher as well. So I suppose everybody has decorated their house or is getting started with that. I spent the last two days just hauling up the boxes and getting things organized and wondering, where am I going to put the Christmas tree this year? And so we decided to put it right smack dab in the front of the picture window, which we haven't done for a long time. And uh, just, gosh, but the mess it creates. And little Asher... Bless his little heart. I was babysitting him this morning because little Ivor had hockey practice. And Aiden, the oldest boy, was off with mom to a hockey game down the province somewhere. He's on a little AAA team there, Pee Wee. And, uh, oh gosh, it's not, not long. Oh, I don't know. Those hockey levels are all, their, their names are changed now. But it it's that Pee Wee level. He's 12. But anyway, so I was looking after Asher, and uh, it was the first time he saw a Christmas tree, and he went over to the tree, and I turned the lights on, and he was just amazed at it, and he, he put his hand out to touch it. He's so good to listen. He just, he just, um, I said, no, no, Asher, you just touch gently, and uh, you can't, you can't, uh, you know, take the balls off or anything like that. And he just put his hands down, and he just looked at it. He's, he's just, he understands everything now. He's just one, as you know. He was one last month. But uh, it was just so nice to see the Christmas tree through his eyes, you know, as a, as a, for the first time, it's just so sweet. Oh, my music has stopped. I guess I'll just start that again. There we go. I love that. That's what I opened the show with today on my own personal page was Twas the Night Before Christmas. And I think it's Jeff McDonald that is a lovely Gaelic singer. See, some of them, yeah, I what, didn't work hard enough on that. That should come up a little bit higher. It doesn't have to come up all the way to the top. Okay. We're getting there, folks. Sorry if I'm being long <laughs> at this. This is the probably the thing that takes up the most time. That music that Ashley is playing right now the type of tune that it is is called a Strath's Bay. And in Cape Breton, that very music is like a call to dance to the solo dancer. Beautiful. And see just there, the pace changed and it goes into a reel. It's, it's beautiful music. Okay. Just two more, and we'll put this in your 350 oven for about 12 minutes, I think. And 12 minutes in my oven absolutely is just perfect. Okay. I think that's it, folks. So if yours look like mine, I'm gonna go put it in the oven. I set my timer for 12 minutes, and then I'm gonna take you over to the stove 
and we will do our date filling, okay? Well, I'm not gonna take you over to the stove just yet. I have to prepare the dates right here in front of you. So I have a little cutting board here and I have my dates. And I have my four cup measuring because we're going to need, I think, two and a half. Is it two and, two and a quarter cups of pitted dates, okay? So, I'm going to take them out here. Now, some people cut them with the scissors. Whatever turns you on, I just chop them up like this. I was actually talking to, well, not talking, messaging with, with uh, Ashley. And uh, when he has time and he's home again, he's gonna come into the kitchen here. That'll be fun. Excited to next Sunday, uh, we're going to have fiddler Andrea Beaton. If you've, I've played her music on here, and uh, she's coming to the house, and she'll probably have a piano player with her, so that's going to be nice. I don't have any music today other than a beautiful CD from Ashley. very much. Okay, folks, I think that that's enough. I'm going to put that in my pot, just a two-quart pot. And to that, I'm going to add one cup of water. One cup of water. Three quarter cup of brown sugar.
It's a half cup measure and a quarter cup measure. And a teaspoon of vanilla. See why I had to order more? And a tiny bit of salt. Okay, I'm going to take you to my stove and I'll be, I'll come back and get you once I put this on the stove, okay? Hi, people. Oh, thanks for coming by and visiting with me and making these things. I'm going to turn this down so that you may be able to see the pot on the stove. I think that's about right. Okay. I'm going to get a spoon. Turn the heat on, medium. All right. So we're going to mix this up. We'll probably, and I know the recipe, I put, I put down six or seven minutes. I was just timing it until the recipe I had just mix until it's soft and then mash a little bit. But I think it took five to seven minutes. I de it depends. So let's just watch this. See if you can see that okay. You see that all right? Now you can you can um, mash this down with the potato masher, and um, I, I'm using. Did you ever guys ever see this kind of a masher before? It's it's a Pampered Chef one. We use it pretty much exclusively for making our mashed potatoes. You wouldn't think that you could, but. It really makes a nice job of the mashed potatoes, and I'm going to be using it a little bit today here. Um, I find if there's anything that's really hard, you know, you could wear out the, the center thing. But this one we've had, I want to say 15 years we've been using this. Uh, the first one we had, we kind of wrecked it, but that was our own fault because we were, we were um, using it on turnip that maybe wasn't exactly soft enough but you can't get a better masher for mashed potatoes but I used it the other day when I was mashing these when when we felt that they were pretty much cooked and uh, it was it worked beautifully or you can use a fork My sister-in-law uh, used to make these, Jeanette Beaton. Uh, she was from, formerly from New Waterford. She was a McDonald from New Waterford. Anybody in New Waterford remember Jeanette? Uh, she was a McDonald, Mick McDonald's daughter from New Waterford. And well, she's the absolute, the best baker I have ever come by. And uh, 
but she used to make these, but she couldn't find a recipe the day I was talking to her. That's a couple of months ago, or I guess now. And uh, so anyway, I, having never made these very much at all, I, uh, I went on a little hunt. And between, between her, we, we went over the recipe and she felt that that was, that was pretty close to what I, uh, she would have made. So we're going with that. And uh, the actual recipe, the first one I found, it didn't have a cup of butter in the uh, short uh, bread bottom. It had a cup of parquet margarine. And you know what? Yeah, you can. You can use that. But I, I know a lot of people like to use the real, the real McCoy. I'm just setting my timer for five minutes because we've had this on here for a little bit. And we can kind of tell because it, it kind of eats up the liquid when we know that it's pretty well done. And they're, they'll be nice and soft to touch. And there's only a minute in the timer left for the tarts. I better get my uh, oven mitts out here. Bonnie McPhee made eight dozen this past week. Is that Bonnie McPhee, formerly from Port Hood, I wonder? I worked with her dad many years ago, if that's the same one. Okay, I'm just gonna turn this down a little bit. While I'm taking this out of the oven, let's just hold on a second. I'll get my mic back in a minute. And we can turn our oven off. We don't need it anymore but there they are you can see if you can see clearly they're just slightly browned around the edges and don't worry if there's a little but a uh, bubble in some you know they'll see a little bubble in the bottom that's fine give a little stir here so i'm going to leave these in the pan and put them on the cooling rack These are coming along really nicely. Okay. Now you guys watch yours, and if you find that they're getting pretty soft, I have still two minutes left in my five minute timer here. I'd say these are darn near close to being done. I'm gonna turn my oven down. The propane, of course, is, is so fast sometimes. Um, about taking the tarts out of the pan, this is what I use. It's my little cake tester. Okay, oh, somebody from Boston, thanks, Nova Scotia. Uh, I was asking, uh, saying that the tree came from Nova Scotia and I guess maybe, hopefully you all know the story about the Christmas tree. And thanks to Boston for all the help, I believe during the Halifax explosion, was it? And somebody just, I saw something about freezing them. Do you know what? They freeze really, really well. I just put them in a plastic container. The ones I made this week, I gave a few away 
and uh, okay there's about 50 seconds left in that I'm turning this off I'm gonna take my measure my measure and I'm going to mash this up that's there they're nice I mean you don't I know the recipe says I don't know what it says five to seven minutes or something like that. You decide when they're done, when they are when they look like this and they're nice and soft. You want a nice creamy, no hard, uncooked dates in there. Okay. All right, people. Now, I really need this to be really just kind of at room temperature. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you over to the sink. And I'm going to put, put this in the sink. I'm gonna put some cold water in here. Nice, as cold as you can get it. Put this where it's not going to get splashed by the water. And I want to see you all. Hi. How's that? I guess I'm a little crooked, but it's the best that I can do. Okay, I'm letting that uh, water come up about halfway up the outside of the, the pan. Just kind of forcing it to, to come to room temperature. And just give it a nice stir, it's quite hot. I'm going to bring them over to the table. Ashley's playing away over here. I miss that. Somebody said a crazy week somewhere in BC. Oh, thank you for saying my tree is beautiful. Look at that. Oh my God, you guys are such, so nice. Somebody said there who obviously makes them a lot, uh, says they're great. You free, freeze them in a egg, empty egg carton and line them with um, plastic wrap. Josephine Bohan from Sudbury. Hi there, lots of Cape Bretoners in Sudbury. So people, um, hope you don't mind me saying that. Hi, people. <laughs> we have some frosting to make. I'm just going to test the temperature of. Oh, yeah, they're, they've cooled down quite a bit. So I am going to take them out of the tart pan and put them uh, on the cooling rack, okay? So see if I can do this nicely so that you can see. All right. A 
Let me get my cake tester. Come out really nice and easy. Oh my gosh, don't I love that music? <laughs> You could make little mini butter tarts in these too, the tiny little bite size, similar base on them. Okay. So we'll leave them here to cool. I'm just gonna go give a stir to the dates. Okay. Lots of moving around for you today. Okay, people. You can can you hear that? That is definitely Jeff McDonald. And he's from Kingsville here in Inverness County on Cape Breton Island. And uh, uh fluent uh Gaelic speaker, which is the language of our forefathers who emigrated here to Cape Breton back in the late 1700s and the 1800s. My people came about mid or, or 1820s to 30s when they came over from Scotland. And uh, we didn't have a lot of external influences, so a lot of the traditions remained uh, right here uh, in, in, in the places that they settled, uh, certainly in uh, northeastern mainland of Nova Scotia and all over Cape Breton Island. And here in Inverness County, you know, different, different ones came from different areas of Scotland. So many times there was different dialects between the islands and in the highlands. And uh, for example, if, if any of you have ever heard um, uh, the toast, slancha. I, I guess it means to your health. I'm not a Gaelic speaker, uh, but I know a few words, but slancha is, uh, is uh, how it is said as you toast uh, uh, someone. And uh, anyway, uh, Mama, who would have been descendant from uh, maybe the Highlands area, Loch Arbor area of Scotland, she would say, Swancha, 
um, the, the word is spelled S-L-A-I-N-T-E, and there's an accent uh, there. And uh, so maybe the people in Iona or um, Iona area, maybe say the Slancha over in Sydney, they pronounce the L, S-L, but Mama would say, spell or, or pronounce the L like with a W sound. So she would say Swancha, Swancha. And just little differences like that. But uh, Jeff, fluent uh, uh, Gaelic speaker and teacher and singer, and he's just uh, wonderful. And that is him singing on Ashley's Christmas CD and singing Silent Night in the Gaelic language. So it's very touching and beautiful for sure. So we have come to the point of where we're, we're going to make our frosting. So uh, oh, this darn thing, I've got to get one of these wireless mics one of these days. I'm going to get the recipe here. I don't want to mess anything up. But uh, the frosting is a quarter cup of soft butter which I have ready here, and I'll, I'll put the camera down in a minute. A quarter cup of soft butter, a teaspoon of uh, pure maple flavoring. Well, here's what, well, I was telling you that Josephine dropped off to me, maple flavoring from Watkins. If you have a Watkins gal close to you, it's great to support them. And uh, here in Mabu, uh, I'm in Port Hood, but that she's just 10 kilometers away, uh, she sells she sells the, the Watkins products and they're great, great products. So uh, you need a teaspoon of that. And if failing not having maple flavoring, why not use maple syrup? I can't see why it would, uh, you know, be any different. And, uh, you know, you can just work on the consistency that suits you. And then two and a quarter cups of icing sugar and Th around three and a half tablespoons of milk and uh, just mix it all with an electric beater and that's that's the way you do it and then we're going I'm going to put it in my you can just put it on with a little teaspoon and just put a little bit on every one just a tiny little bit and uh, the other I'm using my my uh, if you have one of those little cheapy decorator kits you know, either the bags or the little plunger ones uh, they work just fine the one i have <clears throat> again i got it when when tammy was uh selling pamper chef many many years ago i don't even know if they if they sell it anymore as such but uh, that's what i'll be putting mine in because i use it all the time uh So th this is this is mine it's got a number of different tips but I never looked on 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 the website but I somehow don't think and you just put the icing in here and you have your plunger here and I just press on there to to get the little star tip out which is what we use for I'll be using it again next weekend because next weekend I'm making shortbread cookies uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put you down Ah, thank you. So, Lord, I'm not a decorator, but thank you. I'm glad you like my my decorating. I used the Pam spray. Oh, I missed that. Darn it. Okay, I'm gonna put this down and see if you can see this into my sink. I, when I'm making anything with the electric beater, because I just I make a mess. I, uh, it's just, it's easier for me if I make it right in the sinks and then if it splashes, it's going to splash in the sink. So, I've got my stuff together here, I think. Okay, pull you over. I never checked to see if my sink was even clean. It's as good as it's going to get, though. So, I'm going to start with uh, the the soft butter, this is just room temperature butter. There's a quarter cup here. A 
forgot the icing sugar. And a teaspoon of the maple flavoring. Well, I'm just going to guess at it. I'm going to use two capsules. I think that should be about enough. And two and a quarter cups of icing sugar. My half cup measure here. One. going to have enough here and I don't have any more that's two cups and a quarter a little bit more I'm making a mess. We're not going to let that go to waste, though. We'll just put it right in there. And I'm just going to put all the uh, three and a half tablespoons of milk. And I'm going to mix that with the electric beater. Sorry, people, going to make a little bit of noise. Oh, it smells so good. It really does. Okay. I'm going to give my dates a little stir here. Well, they're pretty much at room temperature. But before I do that, I am going to fill my decorator so we'll be all ready. <laughs> I can see somebody saying that does it ever smell good Okay, we'll have this all ready. Perfect.
Okay, we're going to start filling our tart shells. I'm going to get my date filling. Okay, so I'm just going to take a little bit, it doesn't take very much to fill them. I have a teaspoon here. Okay, sorry people. So fill all these. Very quiet. Let's get that music going again. <laughs> okay. We were went over to our neighbors last night. Went over to visit Leo and Cassie. And uh, they've been our neighbors ever since we moved to East Street in 1980. And uh, so our kids grew up with some of their kids and their son uh, was visiting, Kevin. And it was his 51st birthday and I had to just shake my head because I said, oh my gosh, he can't be 51. He was a kid when we were, our kids were growing up, but we had, we sang some songs and had tea and it was a nice evening for sure. Okay. Not making a very good job. I'm kind of, I made a mess of that one. I hope some of you may, if you're interested in making stuff with me, saw my video where some of the things that will, if you're going to make, especially if you're going to make the truffles with me in a couple of weeks, to have, to have the, uh, the forms and, uh, I guess sometimes they're hard to get forms. I don't know. Somebody wrote me and they're going to be using some little forms that candy came in already from a box of chocolates. And I was saying, well, you know, maybe you can use that. I'm not really sure. You will have some date filling left over. There's no doubt because I have another dozen or so left in, um, in the shortbread base. Okay, don't like this one. Okay, those are our pork pies and we have to put the maple frosting on. So, hold on. So now I'm going to 
put the frosting on. I know my mother sometimes would make things like this, not so much the pork pies, but she made her own homemade mincemeat, which I loved. And uh, she'd make little tarts like this. And there you have it. And they're really, they've got a really nice base to it. Hi. So one more recipe in the books. I hope you try it if you haven't tried it today. I picked up my forms this week. Uh, someone said, mm, the messages come up really quickly. Okay, so I forgot to put my kettle on. I'm going to do that right now. And uh, it's the electric kettle, so we'll be making some noise. Hold on.
sorry people. There, I hope you can hear me okay. There now. I hope you can hear me and see me and all of that. And I don't have a nice hat on or sunglasses like I did a couple weeks ago. There's my Christmas tree. Post. Okay, somebody must be sharing a recipe for cherry blossoms, I see. I love this group. Everybody's so nice and kind to everybody else. That's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. So uh, my kettle boiled and uh, I'm just gonna set the tea. Somebody's asking me about my King Cole tea that I like. And um, the message was that they checked out King Cole tea and that King Cole, uh, offered orange pico tea, English breakfast tea, and Earl Grey tea. Who knew? I did not know that because I I come from a time when tea was tea and was only in my adult years that I found out that the tea I drink is orange pico tea. But English breakfast is pretty darn close. Earl Grey, no. It's got it doesn't has it, its own distinctive flavor and it's not just the way I like it. Um, anyway, I'm gonna set my tea. So I had to um, write it out for a lady uh, how I make my tea. So I have a Pyrex teapot, glass teapot, and you can put it on a very low burner. I have it on the lowest setting on my stove. Put two tea bags in the pot. And then I probably put about three cups of boiling water in on top of the two tea bags. And then I put the cover on and I set it back on that burner and I let it sit there for five or six minutes. Maybe not gonna have time to do that today because I'll have to let you go soon. And, uh, and I put my, I like mine with milk, so I put the milk in my cup first, miff or tiff, milk in first or tea in first. I like mine miff milk in first then you don't have to stir it or anything like that and uh, king cole is is a atlantic canada product out of sussex new brunswick and uh, i don't know what's so different about it but it just works for me uh, in younger days i probably had red rose tea too but i think they reduced the amount of tea that they put in their tea bags and i think that was many many years ago and i think from there on i changed uh I, I liked the king cole better and today uh and my 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 brother lives in michigan and he he orders it online from from them or from somewhere and uh his wife was home recently uh, quarantined for a couple of weeks because her sister mary was was not doing uh so great with uh, going through cancer treatments anyway and her being a nurse she came home and she picked up a whack of them on sale uh, when they came on sale so anyway um so that's how i make my tea uh but i have more to say about that i just better set my tea or i'll run out of time
But when I was growing up in the 50s and 60s, still living at home, uh, it was a, a, a you know wood stove, coal stove, and there was always a pot of tea on the stove, and the tea was loose tea. Uh, it, it came in a foil package, and there was a strainer and all of that stuff. And uh, it's uh, it's it's just it was boiled most of the time, and uh, I do not like boiled tea. I like it made just the way, set about five or six minutes and that's just strong enough and good enough for me. So um, anyway, I guess you all know that the pork pie history now, as I, I said that at the beginning of the show, if you haven't, you can either go back and listen to it or you can Google it and just Google Cape Breton Post pork pie story and and you'll, you'll see the history of it there um uh, one thing i want to say before i i go on to the uh, about the cards uh, <laughs> the strongest boiled tea i know how i don't know how they had the stomach for it but anyway christmas giving christmas gifts and uh, and uh I'm sure all of you are thinking this anyway, but I really like to, and uh, you know, say that I hope that everybody uh, takes a second look at where they're buying their gifts. You know, where we're confined uh, in this second stream. I hope that you really try to shop local, shop local vendors, sh shop local crafters, shop. Uh, the musicians, their, their, their music, it, it, you know, whatever. I, I, all of those things are so important now. These small businesses that are trying to stay open and these little shops that are trying to stay open and uh, all, so many of our wonderful women out there who are, have their little home business selling the different products from different brand companies, and, you know, they're trying to make a living too and all of that. It's just... It's, uh, I know a few years ago we decided, let's, uh, whatever we buy, let's buy something that's just made in Canada. Well, you talk about hard to find a label that says made in Canada. That was hard, but we, we did it. We managed to find it, whether we were supporting local uh, crafters or small stores in our area, wherever you live, just, give them hope that you know we can stay open and they've had a tough year so far so try to shop local like yes it's wonderful to shop online and get the the big name products and but amazon they all have they're big money people I, i'm for the little guy and not that i haven't shopped at amazon don't get me wrong, I've done that 100%. Uh, but I think nowadays and, and in this year, some of them are really struggling to, to, to make a go of it. So I really hope you really think outside the box and see, well, who could I support and what can I get from somebody local? and uh, Or give a homemade gift from yourself and your own heart. I think that would be lovely. Uh, and that brings me to the cards that uh, Margie, uh, her photography, uh, that she's uh, done so much work on, 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 you know, perfecting her art and her eye when she is uh, um, taking pictures. She, she just doesn't take pictures. She has a a real eye for it and everything has to be perfect and uh, there's a calmness to a lot of the photos that she uh, takes that really resonate with me and uh, sometimes she'll post stuff on her uh, photography page on her Facebook it's Margie McDonald photography uh, she'll have some really nice ideas on on, uh, on how that particular picture speaks to her and uh, the calmness that it brings and whatever. So in doing that, 
you lovely folks have voted uh, on the, the pack of pictures that she put up, I think 25 pictures on my Facebook page, and you guys all voted on, on those pictures. And so the top 10 uh, Margie took uh, into consideration when we were picking the ones out that she would be ordering. So in the top 10, you chose seven Cape Breton pictures and three Alberta pictures. And so our website, uh, my website, tunesandwoodenspoons.com, is going to have four options or five options uh, for, for uh, of purchase. The first option is going to be the top 10, which will have seven Cape Breton pictures and three Alberta pictures. They're beautiful. And I picked out my favorite 10 recipes of the ones that we have done. So recipe one to 10, um, uh, you know, will be on, uh, like cinnamon rolls is on the very first picture, which is a, a drone shot of Port Hood. And then, you know, uh, all of those recipes will, will be, you'll see them, you know, there's crisp molasses cookies and there's the scones and there's the lemon squares and the decadent chocolate cake and, um, the crispy crunch squares, the, the chocolate chip jumbles, all of those, there's 10 recipes. And they there's one of those on the back of one to 10, uh, top uh, 10 photos, uh, cards. And uh, so that'll be in the first pack. And in the second pack of 10, there's going to be, it's going to be 10 just Cape Breton pictures. The seven that were in the first pack, but three close, uh, uh, seconds uh, th that uh, were voted on and uh, Margie put replace them just if you wanted just a Cape Breton set and then uh, there are two other packs uh, one is uh, a pack of five uh, and their recipes one to five but they're all Cape Breton pictures and the second pack of five is uh, recipe six to ten all Cape Breton pictures so that's all explained in and when you go to the store on the website and then uh, that you can buy a pack of five, uh, all of one picture uh, of a pack of five, but it, it can't be bought singly. We just had to make some choices. But there's another picture that wasn't out there that Margie took right here uh, at home one summer. And it's, it's I Love Cape Breton uh, with sea glass and uh, on, on the sand down on the Port Hood Beach. So those, that, that card uh, is going to be available as well. I don't know if you can see that very clearly or not. But uh, anyway, she's just got a great eye. And um, the recipes, there's no recipe on the back of the I Heart Cape Breton one. But all of the others, uh, they are. I was working diligently today trying to take pictures for the website. And I was pulling my hair out because I'm not a photographer. But for example, here's, here's one of the cards. This is Murphy's Pond here in Port Hood. And on the, on the back of that are the cinnamon roll recipe. And you know, the website information is at the bottom and Margie's uh, Facebook page. And um, so many beautiful ones, just, just gorgeous. And uh, the boardwalk here in Port Hood, sunset shot, that was one of your favorites. And on the back of that is Cape Breton Oat Cakes. And, uh, oh my gosh, the lemon squares, uh, the Banff picture with the, with the rainbow, uh, that's the lemon squares. And, gosh, crisp molasses cookies, that's, a, that's Port Hood Sunset right there. So many beautiful ones. I'm not going to go through them all. German apple cake is another recipe. And this was one of the alternate pictures. It's Inverness uh, beach grass. I love that picture. It's so nice. And the German apple cake recipe on that. Anyway, lots of choices for you if you're interested. We didn't order very many. It's hard to judge on, you know, would a lot of people buy them or find them too expensive. I don't know. That's up to you guys. We'll... We'll check and we'll, we'll send it out uh, by regular mail. Uh, so um, the prices are all there. Anyway, uh, they're not Christmas cards. They're blank on the inside. 
whatever. But what I was going to say, for example, these are lemon squares, this one in particular. But I'm just saying, wouldn't it be nice if you did a homemade gift? Made the lemon squares, you put it in a nice dish, and you gave them the card, and you signed it, and then they had the recipe. Anyway, I, I love that idea. I'm not telling you that you have to do that or push that, but anyway, I just think that uh, there's ways around buying local and uh, giving from your heart as well. I just think, you know, just giving a homemade uh, bit of something would be just so special, so special. Which brings me now to next week. Next week, we're making shortbread cookies. They are a recipe that I got from my sister, Minnie, long, long ago. And Minnie uh, is married to Alec McMaster. And they have three children. And their baby girl is Natalie McMaster. And so Minnie gave me that recipe many, many moons ago. And uh, I, it's the best recipe for me. I like it. It's not the whipped shortbread. Although you can put all the ingredients in a bowl and, and whip it up. Uh, but it just makes it into a dough similar to what you saw today in with the pork pie base and uh, and we'll just we'll do that and uh, we'll make them next week and hope you come back and uh, I'm gonna go and get my tea and guess what I don't like dates I am going to have a bite of the pork pies and I'm not one to, to risk doing that and I better get my tea before it starts to boil. I have my Cape Breton cup today for my pork pies. <laughs> I'm gonna be converted, Deborah Lockheed. I don't know about this. We'll give it a shot. Here's to you guys. Mmm. Oh my gosh, that tastes really good. That's really good. I'm shocked. I'm not one to try anything new, but they are really good. Oh my gosh, and the maple flavoring. <laughs> Good. Okay. They're worth making. They really are. I'm so shocked that I like it. <laughs> I was thinking, what can I have with my tea instead of having a pork pie? And I didn't have one other thing made in the house that I could have. So listen, have a wonderful week and just I'm so happy you're here and come back every week and you're my, I feel like you're my friend and I just, I just love you all and I want you just to love everybody else too and just, it's, it's a tough time uh, we're facing all across Canada and the U.S. Uh, oh my gosh, just, I feel so bad for the people in the U.S. I don't know. So many cases, yes, there's so many more people, but my God, it's frightening. It's absolutely frightening the number of deaths that are happening that we hear about. So God bless you all, all of you that have lost a loved one or whatever, just, just hang in there and we'll get through this together and uh, take care. Love you, bye-bye.